Oh, hi guys. I wanted to uh, talk about this car accident that happened today because there's a lesson to be learned here. And I gotta say that I'm not surprised with how that all went. There was uh, three guys. One of them had a woman on the back of the motorcycle. There was three motorcyclists at the opposite stop sign on the other side of the intersection from me. So we were facing each other. The black car was coming up the hill. The bluish SUV was coming down the hill. Went to make a left turn where the bikers were sitting and went right in the path of the young girl driving the small black car and they collided right there in the middle of the intersection. Boy, those bikers were lucky. They were so close to where those two vehicles came together that they actually, with their feet, they walked their bikes back. They backed up. And then they gave their bikes a couple revs, and they went out and around, and they took off. Cars were still coming and going up and down the street, and everybody was driving around them, and nobody stopped. Nobody stopped. The bikers never put down their kickstand and got off their bikes to see if those kids were all right. It's like nobody gave a damn. Everybody had somewhere to be. And I was at the stop sign, first vehicle waiting to cross. I threw the van in park and I turned on my four-way hazards. The van was still running. I jumped out, I ran out into the intersection and that's when the girl was banging up against the door and she's yelling through the window because she had the window up and she says I can't get out I can't get out and there was all this gas just billowing right where she was sitting in the driver's seat from the airbag and it looked like smoke coming in from the engine compartment and I knew it wasn't good to breathe that crap and I just grabbed the door handle and just reefed that door open because the fender got shoved in behind the hinge of the door. So when I forced the door open, that one, one part of the door on the hinge actually bent the fender in. I had flashbacks to my taxi cab accident because my driver door, when I totaled that taxi cab, went open and I forced it open from the inside. This is the first time I've ever forced the door from the outside. But boy, it gave me flashbacks. And, uh, I, I, I walked her to the corner of the intersection because I didn't want to touch her because I didn't know if she was injured. I just asked her if she was okay. She says, I think so. And she was burned from the airbag. And then she says, my purse and my keys. So got that for her and had her sit down at the intersection and I got a pillow out of this van. And then that's when I jumped in my van and parked it on the opposite side of the street because... My van was in the way of everybody too, so I had to get it parked. And then I went back over and I stayed with her and the young kid that was driving the other vehicle. And I made sure he was okay. And both of them said, this is our first accident. She said she never had an accident before. And he said he never had an accident before. And I told him, I says, well, I've had lots of accidents. So I says, don't worry about it. I says, it happens to all drivers sooner or later. I says, be glad it was a low speed collision and not a high-speed collision because this is the outcome would could have been drastically different and they both understood that and he says who's at fault he asked me this and I says well I'm sorry to tell you but you are I says I saw the whole thing happen right in front of me I says you're at fault but it's no big deal I says we all make mistakes you guys are all right, your cars can be fixed or your insurance can total it and pay you the value of the vehicle and start over. I said, you know, not a big deal. Yeah, it can disrupt your life a little bit, but you know, stuff happens. I told those kids, I says, the, the important thing is, is that you're both okay. With the exception that the girl requested an ambulance and wanted to go to the hospital because she had chest pain and uh, burns from the bag 
and I told the girl, I says, uh, I says, I'm not one that sugarcoats anything. And I says, but I just want to give you a heads up, but don't be afraid. But I says, I'm just going to give you a heads up that you're going to really feel it tomorrow. What, what that airbag did to you, because this is right now you've got adrenaline running through your body because you got scared from having a car accident. But I says, when everything calms down and tomorrow comes, I said, you're going to be really, really sore. So I said, just expect that and know that. And then I asked her again if, if she was sure that she was okay, and she said yes. So I just wanted to make sure of that. But the only ones that stopped you guys was myself and the volunteer fireman. And the funny thing is, the volunteer fireman told me in the middle of the intersection, he says, you look kind of familiar. Where have I seen you before? And then he took a double take, and he's like, didn't I take you to the hospital just last week? I says, yeah. He said, twice. I said, yep, you came to my house. He says, man, you didn't look like you were doing very good. I says, I wasn't, but thanks for your help. <laughs> Small world. Here we meet again, only this time for a car accident. He's <laughs> probably thinking bad stuff happens anywhere I am. But the thing that got me, you guys, there was two girls, probably the same age as those drivers, that were walking up the sidewalk, crossed the intersection, looked at the damage on the cars, and kept going. It's like today, people don't care about other people, you know? And that's sad. It really is sad that people just can't be bothered to go out of their way to do something for, some, for a stranger, for, so, for someone else, a complete stranger. I am always the type to where if I can help somebody, it doesn't matter what the problem is. Help is help. And if somebody needs help, you should help them. I'm a firm believer in that. And I hope all of you watching this video, I really hope you're the type of people that would do the same thing I did if you, if you had an accident happen right in front of you or if you came across an accident that just happened. Now I'll give you an example. A friend of mine who I went to school with several years ago after he got his trucking license, became a national truck driver, he uh, came across an accident scene when he was driving a semi and he pulled over to the berm because a car passed him and then another vehicle passed him. But the first car, once it got back into the lane, swerved and lost control and started to fishtail. And as it spun around, the second vehicle that went by T-boned the woman's car and sent her down over an embankment and totaled her car. And she was trapped in her car, and she had internal bleeding going on. So when my friend Sam left his semi and went down over the embankment to check on the girl, he opened the door, and all he saw was blood gurgling out of her mouth with shock in her eyes. And he just said, oh, my God, and slammed the door and walked back up the hill and did nothing to help the girl. When he told me he did that, I was pissed off at him. I told him, I says, how in the hell could you do that? I said, you didn't stay with her and comfort her and, and be with her, even if she was dying? He says, no, I couldn't deal with it. He says, I didn't want to see all that blood. You know, you guys, things can be horrific in life. But sometimes you just got to force yourself to be stronger than you otherwise thought you could be. Because in that moment, it's everything to that person that needs it. You got to always remember that. To this day, it pisses me off when I think about what he did. He just shut the door on the girl and left her there. Just left her there. And I never did find out if she survived or died after he closed the door and walked away. I know one thing, I could never be that type of person to where somebody that needs help and I deny them and just go about my daily business. I cannot be that human being. I just cannot. And I'm thankful, and this is something all of you can think about. I'm thankful that I've got stuff in this van. This is the pillow I gave the girl to sit on, this camo pillow. 
it's wet because the ground is wet because we had rain uh, yesterday. But at least she didn't have to sit on the wet ground. I gave her the pillow to sit on, something soft, where she could sit and, and calm down. I also carry a fire extinguisher in this van to where if any of those vehicles caught fire, I'd be the first one on the scene with a fire extinguisher to put that fire out. I've got blankets in this van to put around somebody if they were to go into shock. There's lots of things that I've got in this van that would be very useful coming across a, a motor vehicle accident. I've got a hatchet to where I could use the back of the hatchet to bust a window if I had to break glass to get into someone's vehicle to help them, to extricate them. There's all kinds of stuff that I got in this van that not only doubles as camping gear and spending the night in this van, but you never know when what you carry could also be useful in an emergency. So that's something all of you should think about on what you carry in your automobile. Because not only could it save your own life and be beneficial for yourself, but it could also be very beneficial to someone else and save their life. Because what if someone was trapped in a vehicle and that vehicle was on fire? I'd be very glad that I had a fire extinguisher, brand new one, mounted right here at the corner behind the passenger seat. I have a fire extinguisher in this van. That could possibly save somebody's life. So, think about what you carry in your vehicles. And maybe keep a small emergency bag in your vehicle to where you will have the things that you would need to help someone in a desperate, needful situation. It can make the difference between life and death. So it really made me think about what I got in this van. Because I've got towels, I've got, I've got uh, sanitary wipes, I've got napkins, I've got stuff to mop up blood if I needed to. I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's good to have stuff that you can use for other things. But it does go to show you that the world that we live in, out of a certain amount of people, that when, the, that when things become desperate, there's only a few people that will step up to the plate. And you gotta think about this if you belong to a prepper group because I'm here to tell you guys right now, and this is the God's honest truth, you could be in a prepper group and they will promise and swear up and down that they've got your back until it's time for them to have your back and then they bail. Because the kid that caused the accident had a passenger in his vehicle and that kid never asked if his friend was all right and he took off on foot, he bailed. So not only did his own friend flee the scene in the situation and took off and just left his friend there to deal with the authorities, but total strangers never even stopped to help. So it goes to show you, it's, it's, less, it's many lessons in one situation. Have things in your vehicle that could help other people when they need help. Be the person that steps up to the plate the person that's reliable and takes charge. And also think about who you have in your group when it comes to survival, because when it comes down to it and that day comes where you need to find out if those people are truly loyal, you're gonna be shocked at how few of them are actually gonna be loyal. You will be shocked at how many will abandon you or even turn on you and take what you have and not help you defend and stand with you. Like they say, that's when you know who your friends are. That's who you know who you can count on. I want you guys to think about that. Think about what you carry in your vehicles. It may not only help you, but it could also help someone else. I'm glad that I got stuff in this van that could possibly save somebody's life. So it's useful in more ways than just camping. It could make a big difference. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.